So we've seen our inner class, our hash element that we're going to use, and we've defined our linked list H array, which is an array of linked lists. Right? So that's, our, that's the thing that's doing all the work for us. That's our hash. That's what we have to do. So the first thing we want to do is have our constructor, and our constructor is going to initiate, initialize all of our variables. So our constructor, of course, is going to be public hash. And it's going to allow our users to define what size table they want to have. So the first thing we need to do is just remember the table size. so that we can come back to it. And now what we've got to do is declare our array, our array, which we've declared up here the variable name, but now we have to actually initiate that as an array. And if you cast your minds back to when we talked initially about generics, creating arrays in Java with generics is quite tricky. And so what we actually have to do is create an array of objects and then cast them. And so what we're going to do in this case is create an array of linked lists without any generics and then cast them. And so the way that we do this is that we say, here's our h array, our variable from up there. And we're going to cast it as a linked list hash element kv array and it's a new and we can just call it linked list array of table size okay it's all one line If we were just creating a standard generic array, for example, this is one that we'll see later, um, we're going to have an array of keys. The way that we do that is that we create an array of objects and cast it to the generic keys. This is the same thing. Here's our cast, here's our cast, okay? So we've got the same cast. It's the same idea. We're just creating a, an array. We're casting it to that kind of thing, and we're setting that to the variable. So now we've created our array of linked lists. So we could be done. We could, we could say, OK, that's cool. Let's just call it there. We're done. No worries. But the problem is that at the moment, our array actually is empty. right? So every position in our array is empty. So if we want to add something to our linked list, we have to go to that position in the array, and we have to say, is there a linked list here? If there is, go through the linked list until we add it. If there's not, create a new linked list and then add something. If we want to find whether we have an element in our data structure, we get the hash code, make it positive, mod it on the table size, go to that index, and then say, is there a linked list there? If there's not, return null. If there is, go through the linked list to see if it's got the element. If we want to remove it, we go to the location. Is there a linked list there? And so every operation, we have to check if there's a linked list at every position. And so that's just a waste of time. Since we're going to the effort of constructing the array, we might as well, while we're doing this, just initiate every position with an empty linked list. We're already using time. It's not going to take us much more time. And it's not going to include much more memory, because every linked list is empty until we add something. And so it's just a space that's pointing to space on the heap. right? 
And so we can just basically write a little iterator for int i is equal to 0, i is less than table size, increment i, and then h array position i is new linked list hash element kv. Now we're guaranteed. Any time we go to the posi any position in our array, there's a linked list there. If we're looking for something, if our linked list is empty, that's fine. Our linked list we can deal with em looking through empty arrays and returning null or throwing in no such on an exception. Finally, we just set our, our couple of global variables. Let's set our max load factor. equal to 0.75, and our num elements equal to 0 because we don't have anything in our data structure yet. Okay. As a complete aside, as a complete aside, Pause for a second. Everybody at home is like, oh, the video's frozen. No, it hasn't really. All right, as a complete aside, one of the things that I talked about on Tuesday, and I said not to worry about it, is when you initiate the, the array, having your table size be an odd number or a prime number. Okay? because it helps distribute the numbers, the, it helps distribute the data throughout the table. In fact, I was looking at some code for a, a hash yesterday, and if you declare your table size, it increments it to the next available prime number, and they just have a list of pre-computed prime numbers that they use. But if you look in the Java API, if you look in the Java API, the default table size in the Java API is 16, which is neither prime nor odd. And the default max load factor in the Java API is 0 0.75, the same as I've put here. Okay. So how many elements do you have to add to one of the default hash function, hash classes, in the Java API before it will resize. 12. After you've added 12 elements, 12 over 16 is 0.75. So either on the 12th or the 13th element that you add, it will resize the table. The choice of max load factor is really up to you as the designer or you as the, the user of the hash. And in the Java API, you can set what load factor is, uh, sorry, what the max load factor is so that at what point it resizes. You can also set the initial table size. So if you're making a data structure or you want a data structure and you're going to add a lot of data to it, you might want to initialize it to have a large table. If you have a high load factor, 1.2, 1.5, something like that, you're going to end up with more linked lists, but you're not going to spend a lot of time resizing. Remember, to resize our array, we have to take ele every element out and then find where it should go and put it back into the new array. So that's a, an expensive operation. If you have a low load factor, max load factor, then you're going to resize more frequently as you add more things. So if the Java's max load factor, if you drop that to 0.5, now after adding eight things, you're going to resize the table. So you keep your linked lists more evenly distributed at the cost of more frequent resizing. So it's a combination of the max load factor and the table size basically sets the limit on how frequently you resize your table. 0.75 is a good overall max load factor 
for a generic hash um, like the one that we're designing here, where we don't know what people are going to use it for. All right. So we've constructed our we've constructed our hash. We've got our inner class that's going to hold things, our inner class of hash elements. We've got our globally scoped variable, our list of arrays, our number of elements, and so on. And we've got our constructor so that when somebody says they want to use our hash, they call the new hash method, it initiates all of this data. 